Jeremy, I'd like to say I thank God for eight years more. Thank God, the old saints. Amen. Thank God, you know, I was thinking there years ago, we was there, it, it rained for a little bit, and then it ended the sun would come back out. I got to think about how God knows exactly what we need. Yeah. Well, he knows when we need the sun shine, he knows when we need the rain. Yeah. He knows when we're at our weakest point, he knows when we're at our strongest. Yeah. He, knows, he knows that whenever he calls, he knows whether we're going to do what he wants us to do or not. That's right. You know, I think I thank God that I know my shepherd. I know his voice. And even those that are lost, that soul knows the voice of God. So if he calls you, he, he's wanting you to come. But I thank God for being here. Thank God I know for a fact that I'm saved. Amen. I thank God I know what he needs. I'm going home. I'm, I'm, never, I'm not going to die. I'm just going to go sleep for a little while and open my eyes again. I thank God for that. I thank God for being here. Let's remember Brother Mike and Remember my uncle Marvin? They had to get him to the hospital last night in the emergency room. But uh, most of all, let's remember those that are lost. But so really pray for Mike. We went over there today to see him. He's in bad shape. He really looks bad. And, uh, and, and you know, I thank God. And I know it lifts him up whenever, I, whenever people call him because I've caught him. You can tell his voice. He, he'll, he'll get a little happier. But, you know, the day that I went there, he was crying, telling me that he wanted to get back to church. That broke my heart. You know, and at him a member of this church and helped the soul leader, I thought, man, surely we all ought to be praying for him. Yeah. Because of what the blessing that man's been. Yeah. I thank God for being here this morning. Sure has, sure. Thank God that I know I'm saved. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. I've come looking for something good to happen. Amen. 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 You know, when I got up this morning and studied a little bit, there's one little bit of uh, scripture that's been sticking out to me when uh, uh, said that David, he was uh, about before the Lord, and he was just asking the Lord, just who am I? You know, uh, I, everything that the Lord blessed that man with, but yet he was humble enough just to ask the Lord, who am I? You know, who am I that I've got all these things, you know? I, I couldn't help but think, you know, so many times uh, the Lord come by and he blesses me, but that's what, who am I? Who am I that I deserve anything that he has? Uh, I'm nobody, man. I don't want to be anybody. I don't want to be uh, uh, lifted up or nothing. I just want to be able to lift him up. I want to be right down here. I want him to be way up here. Uh, and if I can continue to do that in my life, my life's going to go exactly how he needs me to go. And that's all I want. I want to be able to walk in his path. I want to, I want to be able to do exactly what he asked me to do. Uh, Brother Dean, I don't want to question things when he asked me to do this or when he asked me to do that. I don't want the devil to be sliding on in there and saying, well, you don't need to do that right now or, or don't ask that person to do this. But you had to... So many times I let that happen, and that's on me. That's on me. Uh, it's nothing that the Lord's done. He's gave me the strength. He's gave me the faith, and I can tear the devil away from me. But yet so many times, Brother Dean, uh, I'll let the devil come right in on me and tell me not to do these things. And, uh, you know, put them evil thoughts in my mind when they know they don't need to be there. But I tell you what, the Lord is truly worthy this morning. I, did you come to worship Him? Because I sure did. I want to give Him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise because He is worthy to be praised this morning. He truly is. Just like, you know, all the songs of, uh, of David, if you read in the songs, how he's always uplifting the Lord. That's why he was known uh, to me after God's own heart. Hey, on, no, no. It's not that he didn't see it because he sinned greatly all the time. He yeah. sinned. He comes short just like I do. Uh, but, but yet every time the Lord had him to do something, Brother Mike, he, he was willing to do it. He sure was. He was willing to do it. So just who am I this morning? I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm just somebody that the Lord saved and I get to go home one of these days. So yeah, while I'm here, I want to praise him. I want to uplift him. Come on, I want to tell you what he's done in my life. Because he's done so many things. He brought me from so many dangers. He brought me from all that. He's lifted me up out of that dirty clay. He truly has. And sometimes I feel like you have to take both hands to lift 
be a beller. I came over here at Valentine's Day morning, come over to World Lifeway and go 
somewhere. God said, you're going to join us tomorrow. I said, I ain't doing it. I said, I'll turn you up to the house. He said, if you do, you'll never make it home. I got here, I had to join. My wife never knew anything about it, so I got home. But you know, I had to do what God had to me do. You know, I said, if you don't feel like leaving, your, leaving the church where you're at, I said, God don't see you with me. I said, I can't help that. I said, I got to do what God wants me to do. I got to join and that's what I had to do. And, the, and, I, and as long as I went and said it, you shouldn't have done it. You've done it your own way. Before I was coming and told you to do it your own way, you know. But I went, I did exactly what God told me to do. And I got over here and one of the first messages I heard was about tradition. That's what it is. People want to go by tradition. You know, Work. Amen. 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 He's got people in the church. Now, right. This is right the church that keeps me. This is the problem in the church. We got people in the church that'll do everything. Yeah. We got people in the church that won't do nothing. Yeah. It's because they want to depend on them, the people they don't does something to do it all. You're never gonna get your blessing like that. Amen. If you're gonna get your blessing, you gotta put a little effort in it. Amen. You said, like I said uh, last time when I preached. We've got to take our identity back. Uh, We've yeah. lost our identity, and we don't care anymore. We, we, we don't care what people think. We don't care what they what they see out of us. So we will still say we're a Christian. Yeah. Sure. All we want to do is people see it. A lot of people anymore all they want to do is they just go to church to be seen. Yeah. The same that I went to church. Bless God, if that's all you're coming for, you Bible said, oh. you can watch TV, you just as much as you can see there not, not having God in your heart and being full of you. It ain't different. Oh, but you know we think about it's not just the big things that yeah. kill us like that. The Bible says it's the little, uh, the little foxes that spoils vine. The devil he'll go there deep a little bit here, a little bit there, yeah. and you start yeah. losing your strength. Yeah. And the more he gets to that vine, it starts dying out. Yeah. And when he gets down to the root, that's whatever you will forgive it. Yeah. Like, it's like Brian said there all you know, this time. When he gets down to that root, and he kills that root, you're gonna forget you be even being purged of your own sins. You're gonna be, you're gonna forget you being purged of your sins. Yeah, that soul's gonna go back to heaven. But you're going to deal, and you're going to pay for everything you do on this side. I, and I don't care if. If God, if God tells you to talk to somebody you don't, and they and I go to hell, it's yeah. your fault. Yeah. Because you didn't do what God asked you to do. Yeah. It's going to be required at your hands. Oh. I know that there's times that God's told me to do things. He's told me to stand and, and, and testify or preach or whatever. And I'll say, I'll sit there and say, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And then the next person gets up and does exactly what God told me to do. Amen. That's how you know. When you, when you, that's the very first sign right there that you know you, you went away from what God wants you to do. I don't care what you're doing. If you, if you put anything in front of God and, and don't come to church, that's your God. Because you, it, 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 God ever said the prayer, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Everything you do that you put before God in this church, if you're a member of this church, then, then you're commit your broke at commitment right there. Yeah, break yeah, one, you might as well break them all. Yeah, Just like a terror where says thou shalt commit adultery. Yeah. You know, that that I ain't talking about natural adultery. Uh, we can uh, commit uh, spiritual yeah, adultery against yeah, our yeah, church. Right. And, and, and that's not doing what God wants us to do. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 we yeah, take yeah, yeah, yeah. these eyes, this mouth, yeah, and we'll and we'll yeah, kill everybody we do. We'll get we'll get on Facebook and we'll run everybody down. Bless God if you got something. Be set to my face. Be a man or a woman about it, a Christian about it. Don't bless God. Get on bless God and run everybody down or on social media. That's where we lose our identity. Because, you know, if we got a problem with somebody, the Bible says go to them. Don't tell everybody else about your problem. Because it's just like it's just like I, uh, when we were in school. And the teacher reminded me of this the other day. We had a thing that we do. We just hit the circle. The teachers want to see what happened. After you tell, the teacher tells somebody something, they want to pass the story yeah. all the way around and see what happened when it comes back to the other yeah. kids. It yeah. never was the same. Yeah. It's yeah. never the same. Yeah. But that's the reason why this tongue will kill our, yeah. our, our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because the stories that we hear, we all, we'll always add something yeah. to it. The next person will add something to it, and then it then it's blown so out of proportion oh, yeah. that it tires people up. That's what tires churches up. That's the reason why all these churches are down there are busting right split right down the middle. Yeah. Because their members are fighting. Yeah. Bless God, I'm blessed not that way. Yeah. If it ever started here, I, I wouldn't have it. I, and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Here lately, I've been, I've been asking God about a lot of things here lately. I told him I want him to give me a backbone. Bless God, if I see something going on in the church that ain't here, I'm going to tell you about it. So you might as well expect it. If I see you doing something in the church house, or after you should be 
doing? I'm going to come and tell you about it. I'm not going to wear and tell my brother and sister. I'm going to come and I'm going to tell you so we get straight today. Because you, because the devil sometimes will get you uh, so out of your sorts, out of mind, but you don't realize what you're doing. Amen. If we're supposed to help one, or we see a brother and sister, we're supposed to go and help lift them up. So, and that's what I'm going to do. If I, if I see you out here running around doing sin, I'm going to come and call you on it. If you see me doing it, come and call me on it. That's what we're supposed to do. That's how the church stays strong. It's exactly right. Don't be responsible. You know, the Bible says you can anger, but sin not. I get angry in a lot of ways, a lot of people, the way they act, and I treat the church. But I can't, I can't go out there and, and call them out and bless them out in front of people. I can't go out there and, and talk about them in the world. i got to pray for them and help them. Help them the right way. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think about that so much this morning Come on. that all the things that God's blessed me with, and, and a lot of times I just sit by and not and not let Him use me. Yes, yeah. He called me to preach in 2009. And, and I know I, I'm the worst preacher he ever called. I, I called him as a God. You called me as a God. You don't know what you're doing. Well, I told him. I said, you know, I had no idea what you're doing. I said, God, I can't read good. I ain't been talking in front of people. I said, you know that. And he said, he said, he said, I'll go with you. He said, I will fill your mouth. He said, all you got to do is that, be at best. And, and you know, he, he's helped me. I can, I can read the Bible a lot better. I can read anything else. That's because... But I keep reading like a newspaper. Uh, i got to ask God to help me. Show me where you want me to read. You know, the Bible says to study, you show yourself a fruit. So, but I, I, I'm guilty. A lot of times I won't lay my Bible up down and I won't pick it back up the next Sunday. That's, and, I, and I'm guilty of that. And I'm guilty of doing it several times. And, and I ask you to forgive me for that. Because I'm not doing what God told me to do. God gave us a road map and went by. He gave us instructions. He gave us a way. He showed us, he showed us how we're supposed to act. Uh, hey, how we're supposed to treat one another. Uh, how we're supposed to go out and, and help one another. But anymore, we don't want to help nobody. Bless him, Lord. Bless God. If, if you call me, I'm going to do my best to help you. I'm going to do my best. And there's going to be times I'm going to fail you and I ain't going to help But we need to stand behind our church because it's getting worse and worse out there. I'm telling you, it ain't getting no better. It's just going to get worse. And if we want our church to stay together like it is, we want to come together and we'll mind one accord. We want to pray together. We're going to, we're going to stand together. And we're going to back our pastor. We'll never see him. Because that's, that's the only way we're going to keep it, keep the devil out of here. And, 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 but I thank God for here. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to testify a little bit. That's what God told me to tell you. Let me tell you, and, and like I said, I had to get it first this morning. I, I, it, it didn't hit me uh, about the next we started over here on the way to church. I got to think about it. I said, I said, a lot of times we think that we're going to go do something for God. And we got to our mind what we're going to do, what we're going to say or whatever. And we'll, and we'll get there and it'll completely change. And if you don't and if, and if you do not do what God wants you to do and it completely changes, and you still want to do what you want to do, then, then you're doing it in your own. It will kill the service. So if we try to do it our own way, it will kill the service. Oh, yeah. Every single time. Because God said, if you defeat the Spirit, He'll leave. Yeah. Yeah. If God, and if you know it's not of God, you can't do it, then you're defeating that Spirit. Yeah. And it's going to leave. Yeah. Exactly right. there, thou shalt not steal. We do it, every time we do it there, we're stealing from God. Every time we get up, we do what we want to do in our own mind, we're stealing from God. <laughs> And you know, there says, "Thou shalt not bear false witness." Thy neighbor. Get him out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start the very first one. Yeah, there you go. And I want you. I want everybody to listen. Yeah. And everybody also needs to read that church cup too. Yeah. What's your yeah. joy? Yeah. I told you the other day. I said, I said, if you used to, they would get up and read the church cup and back to join this church. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. You can't. You can't uh, join this church. Do what you want to do. And be living with somebody. You can't. Uh, you, you can't. Get, I mean, I mean, you can. You can come to church. You can't get up here. You can't have a job in the church. Live with somebody because you can't teach the whole council Bible. It's just like these men that want to, that want to uh, get divorced and get remarried. Say they're going to preach. You can't preach. You cannot be the pastor of the church because you cannot preach the whole council of the Bible. It says, that, it, says uh, it says the husband of one wife. Right. Yeah. These women that out here that, 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 that preach in churches, how can they be the husband of one wife? Tell me that. God said it that one way. God said it one way and one way over. And if we're not following what he says, we're committing spiritual adultery in this church. And it says, honor thy father and mother. We're not doing what we need to do. We're not honoring our honor father in heaven and the mother of church. We're, we're, we're tired of that. Okay, we'll start first. He says, thou shalt not have no other God before me. Okay. Thou shalt not have to make any engraving images. Uh, uh -huh. Thou shalt.
shall not take thy name of the Lord of God in vain. Yeah. Remember the seventh day. Keep it holy. Yeah. Right there. A lot of times we won't take her. Like I said, we won't take and just do what we want to do. When it's summertime, I understand. But God knows when we go on vacation. Like that. Yeah. We won't just lay out every week to go to the lake or wherever. That's not right. Come on. Honor thy father or mother. As I said, thou shalt not kill. We start running his mouth and his tongue will kill somebody. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Like I said, we've done that there. Thou shalt not steal. We, and we're not doing what God wants to do. And we're, and we're still, if, we, if we do what we want to do, and we kill the Spirit, we're still from our other brothers and sisters. Because you're killing the Spirit. Okay? And then thou shalt not bear false witnesses against thy neighbor. And thou shalt not covet. I've done every one of them. I've broke every one of them in my life. Every one of them I've broke. If you say you've not broke, I want to see you know because you've got to be perfect to get there broke. I, and, and you've got time you need to read church country and, re, and, and just refresh your memory of what you join this church. Yeah. 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 I, I, I thank God for this. That's all I've got. But, but we need to think about that. We need to, because things, that's what I said, things are getting so bad out there we need to remember what God, the teaching, what God said, and what the church covenant is, and what we join. And we join this church to be a member, to support this church, to, to uplift this church, and all we do is to uplift our pastor and be behind him. He, it's not his job to take care of your problems. It's not his, he, his job is to be preach the word. Our job as deacons is to see over the pastor's table and, and, the, and the widows, the orphans, and do what they need to do. Going back to, to the members, it's our job to be praying. If you if you don't if you ain't a singer or you don't do whatever, you can be praying. You can be praying and listen to those that's, that's doing what God wants them to do. If you do what you need to do by praying, God's going to bless you. But if you're going to sit there on your hands all the time, you're never going to get any blessings. But I just I just I don't know. God showed me it this morning that, that we just as, as bad as this world's getting, we need to stay close together, stay like we are, pull together. I know there's going to be problems arise there. Oh, it is because yeah, we're, we're yeah. humans. Yeah. But don't let it don't let it get out of, out of control. Right. Take care of it right then. Don't yeah. let it get out of control. When we let it get out of control, it will yeah. turn up the church. Yeah. And that's something I don't want to see. I don't want to see the church for. I want to see God's church go on strong. Because right. because we're supposed to be we're supposed to be a soul winning yeah. station. Yeah. That's what we're here for. And what we're here here is a candle on that hill with uh, on that light that uh, nobody can hide. Don't put it under a bushel. Put it on, on the mantle where everybody can see it. Show people what you got. Show people that you're a child of God. Show them that you're happy. And I told my son and I said, I said, you don't have to. I said, God's people can be just as happy as these people out here makes they're happy out here running around. They're not happy. They're just searching for happiness. God is real happiness. You can go to God on Saturday night and get Sunday morning or Saturday morning. You'll know where you've been. You ain't going to wake up with a hangover, with a headache. Because you're going, because you're going to know that you've been in God's house, and God's blessed you. And I can have just as much good time out here in the world, just like us boys get together and fish and like that, have a good time, have a good time with the Lord, see the beauties of nature. Come on. But people just don't want it no more. Come on. But it says, it says people's deeds, they love darkness better than light because their deeds are evil. But you know, God says everything you do in the darkness will be brought to the light. So don't think you're ever going to get away with anything. You may hide it for just a little while, but it's going to come out. Amen. It's going to come out somewhere. It's going to, it's, somebody has has seen you doing People will watch us everything we do. Oh, yes. And even when you think nobody's around, people are watching. They do. Watch and I tell you, you know, that's something my dad said many times. It, it, it's, it's, it's what you do in private that nobody sees. Is it's, it's, it's what uh, is your, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, but. You know, what you do in secret, and if you do it in, in, in like there, and, and people ain't ashamed of seeing you when you're by yourself, you shouldn't be ashamed of them seeing you anytime. That's right. Yeah. But people's watches daily. And we got to watch our walk. we got to watch our talk. Because we, we need to be telling them, see, people, but a lot of people anymore, they don't want, uh, I, I wasn't sure if ever, if ever drunk in Knoxville. Every prostitute in Knoxville, I want to come to this church. Because right. the Bible says the church right. is for the sick. Yeah. It's, it's not for those that are holy. Right. That thinks they're holier than thou. Right. I'm telling you, it's for the lame and the sick. Yeah. It's for a place for them to come in and get what they need. Because if they can't get what they need, if they ain't no place for them to come in, they ain't no place for them to come in. They ain't no place for them to come in. They come in here and they yeah, stink. Yeah, I they don't care if the mirror stinks with alcohol. Yeah, I mean, they're hardly yeah, had a bath of blood. Bless God, we're welcome to hear them sit on the yeah, front bench. It's like I said in the Bible, they were like that. They were like the same one, but let this one come sit on the front bench. They happen to come in, let them sit in the back bench. Bless God, you can't show faith in Because God said we're all one 
same. He can create us all equal. We're all on equal ground. I don't care if they're, if they're the biggest oh, drunken no. dozzle, the biggest prostitute, the biggest whatever. I don't care what they are. They, if they, we, they need to be allowed to come to the church house where they can hear the word. They have to be able to hear the word to be able to be saved. And if we want to push them out the door, then we're not doing what God wants to do. Because those that want to come in there and, and say, well, look what I gave. You know, that little woman gave three mice. I think was all she had. And, uh, and, she, and she gave more than any of them because she gave from the heart. Those others was, kind of, was given because of pride and want to show what they can do and how much money they have. Bless God, it don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how little you got. you got to have God in your life if you want to go to heaven. Amen. It's been said here so many times. Let me see, here's so many times. Here you go to heaven, you're going to go to hell. There's no halfway house. There's no, there's no purgatory. There's no place for you to sit. Wait. My dad has taught me many years of this, and, and I listened to my dad teach many years. I, I wish I knew half of that man there knows. I wish I knew half of that Bible. He knows it. But he's, he's taught us many years. Now, listen to many years. In many years, he's told me, he says, son, you got to stand for what's right. You can't, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. Yeah. It's not right for, for people to be able to come in the house of God and do what they want to. People say, it's all right. That's so and so. Let them do it. Let them do this. Let them do it. No, I don't care who you are. You're not going to do what you want to do. Like I said, God showed me that us men need to be men. Us women need to be women. Just like God said, there's no, there's no, uh, I'm a, I'm a man and I'm going to have a woman. I ain't, it's, and there's none of that junk. That is all co contrary to God's word. It, it is just like it was Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the reason why he destroyed it. Yeah. And things I think the other days, just reading the Bible, it's as bad if not worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. It is, I'm telling you. People out here tell them it's all right for their children to, to be, it's all right for their children to be, uh, be uh, gay, you know what I'm saying? Amen. Teach them the right way. Right. Show them that God's here supposed to be men and women right. in God. Amen. When I was a man, I, I, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Listen. When I become a man, I put away childish things. Right. How many times did I sit around being childish? Right. I've been childish many times. Right. A lot of times I've been childish. But bless God, God showed me it's time for me to step up. Right. And I'm going to step up because I've not been doing exactly what I'll go with them. <laughs> It's time for me to step up, support this place, and stand for what's right. And, and I don't care who you are, Nathan, preacher, whatever. If something's going on wrong in this church, and I don't care if it's in your family or if it's in my family, I'm going to call it out. Because it's time we, we do what God wants to do. It's time that we bring the church back to what God made it to be. If we're going to stay the law say we're going to stay together. That's all there is to it. We're going to stay together, pray together, we'll mind one accord. Yes. Morning, it's out of God. I didn't even say it. I wouldn't plan on saying it anymore. I wouldn't plan on saying anything. But God showed me at this morning, and He told me, He said, It's time for me to step up. It's time for me to step up and be the husband I need to be, be the father I need to be. And my children, and, and, and this will be my children like I, need to, like I need to do. Because that's the reason why the world kids, parents keep this from their children anymore. Because they say, Well, that's child abuse. It didn't kill me. It, it made me a better person growing up. I learned it the right way and the wrong way. When my dad got belt off, I knew what was coming. I knew that. I was getting that with him. And I'm telling you, if you're, if you're doing stuff that you don't need to be doing, you're going to get a with him. And I'm telling you, when God gives you it, that's one you don't want. I've had them, and I don't like them. I don't like when God has to give me a woman. I don't want him to have to humble me. I want to humble myself. Because when he has to humble me, Himself, that, that's bad. That's hard, and it's rough. Yeah, and I and, I, and, and I've been, I've had to be humbled, and everybody here knows I had to be humbled not too long ago. And God humbled me, and He told, and He told me that, that I was going to straighten up. And then this morning, come, He said, "It's time to step up. It's time we step up." It's just like playing ball. It's time you step up to the pitcher's mound, and it's time you step up right to the plate and get ready to bat. Yeah. It's time that we that we yeah, that we get right. in the game, so to say. We get into what we're supposed to be doing. Don't be playing no games in church. Don't be, don't be sitting around on your telephone, yeah. looking at your phone in yeah. church, yeah. because that's just what's distra that's distracting you. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and if God wants you to do something, you're sitting there on your telephone. You're not going to pay attention to what He's telling you. Wow. Truth, if I'm sitting out in my seat looking at the window at what's going on outside, I'm not paying attention to what God wants. Yeah. Amen. But, but when God told me that to I thought, Lord, what? 
It's time to step up. I mean, you're going to step up or get out of the way. That's just the way it is. That's that's what that's that's the way it goes. You can't you can't straddle things. You either gonna get in or get out. Because we got to see the law say. I thank God for you. And I say I thank God for this church for the way it stands. I thank God for our visitors because I want them to feel at home. I want them, I, they're not visitors. I want to be here more than one time. They're visitors. But you know, I want them to see the kind of church we are because that's what the world needs to see is the kind of church we are. Not the kind, not the kind of church you want to be. The kind of church we are. You know, you got these big mega churches, these big Texas, out there, one down in Texas, you know, uh, Joe Osteen. Yeah, he's a good mobile issue speaker, but he's going to lead a lot of people to hell because he ain't doing what, uh, he's not preaching what needs to be preached because he's, he's telling people what they want to hear because yeah, right. of what, they, what they're paying. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's it. The devil, the devil will put everything out there to try to destroy God's work. He's been doing it from the beginning of time. Right. And, and don't think he's going to stop. That's right. You know, I heard, I heard a preacher tell me, tell, tell us one time, we went to church at Mormon, and he preached, and he said, I want you to all come back tonight, because I'm going to tell you who the most faithful member is in this church. Everybody just got real quiet. Came back at night, he said, I'm going to tell you, the devil's the most faithful member in this church. He said, we're going to bring him with us every time we come. Amen. And, and, you know, and, and it's true. That's why they, they used to preach and tell us. It ain't like it. You go to these churches anymore, they don't, turn, they don't tell you yet. You know, we had a preacher one time uh, put a box on, 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 our, on the board. He said, come by and look in there and you'll see what the problem is with this church. Walk by down in there. It's a mirror. He's looking at you. Say, That's the problem with our churches. It's us. It's not God. God gives us everything we need to, uh, to be sitting in heavenly places every time we come to his house. It's up to us whether we want to take the spirit out. You know, and, and I'm just going to tell, I'm going to, I'm going to tell, say sure and then I'm going to hush. I'm going to tell my brother how much I appreciate him. Because until we came up here, I never seen him get to sing in church. Yeah. And see him sing in church, and see him get blessed and feel good, yeah. and him tears coming out of his eyes. Yeah. What a blessed day! Because yeah. yeah. I know we're growing up, we did things we and we didn't go to church a lot of times because we want we didn't want to. You know, we got older. But you know, God showed it. Showed me these things in the Bible. Just raise them the way they they need to go. Oh, they want to depart from it. I know they come back. But that's hard watching your kids not do what they need to be doing in the church. Yeah. It's hard watching my son not want to come to church. Uh -huh. Because I, I, I knew uh, years ago when he started working there, I told him, I said, he'll have to work on every Sunday like that. Uh, back then I said, he's going to get a further and further away from God. But now he, he don't want to come to church. He always wants to try to make excuses like he's sick or this or that when he comes to Well, he's off work where he can go to church. Yeah. Yeah. But... See, that's what I'm saying. But I know when he gets older, he'll come back to because God promised. Hey, bro, because I raised him the right way, brought him up to church. I know he's safe. Yeah. I know he'll come back, but it's just hard as a parent to see that. So, what, what do you imagine what, what God and him think about uh, seeing us? Yeah. How hard he, how yeah. how heartbroken he is when he sees us doing what we do. Yeah. And we're not, yeah. and we're not trying to help the lost. We're trying, we're just trying to be here and just enjoy things. You know, but we need to be out there asking the lost to come in. Yeah, but. God showed me out this morning, and I just, want, I just want to share it with you. I thank God for here support.
thankful I am to be back. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm thankful for all the prayers that went out for me and my family, Lord. To make them, you know, those three kids that God's placed in my Brenda's life. And we brought them off to be back home safe. Yeah. I'm thankful for that, you know. There was a thought come to me this morning, not till this morning, but this morning. You know, when, uh, you know, this time, how fast time is passing by. Yes, it is, Paul. You know, uh, God said us to be on vacation for seven days, and, uh, Lord, it just felt like I blinked my eye and it was gone. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, <laughs> sure. what my thought is this morning that, you know, we, me and my family, last week we, we left with a request Come on, to, Bob. to go away and spend uh -huh. a few yep. days away. Yep. Oh, yes. Last thing on. But God's, I've got to bring a request back. <laughs> last thing on. Lord, it's a family that I've never seen, I don't even know of, but I want to request a prayer for a family. Yeah. You know, the first day we was there, uh, Amber Alert, a little six-year-old boy, gone. Yeah. A little six-year-old boy. I want to pray for that family, Lord. Two days later, you know, his little body came in. Come on, Bob. To the shore. Yeah. We don't got no promise. Uh, I'm sure that family didn't think one time that they weren't going to come back with their little boy. Yes, yeah. sure. Bless you, Bob. Come on, Bob. So, uh, my thing would be this morning to my church. Yeah. If you got the least impression to pray for someone, yeah. pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
They're constantly saying, oh, you said something wrong. What did I say? <laughs> so I said, I, just a simple thing. Yeah. The little guy that worked with me, he said, I never heard you say nothing out of the way, but them guys want me to. So yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. won't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a husband and wife that just moved up here. His wife's made him do a jar because each time that he cusses, he's got to put a dollar in there. And he said to me the other day, he said, how do you do it? It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I simply told him. I said, it's just gone. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. The world's worse. Man. You know, God, yesterday, you know, I, I've never shared this. But, you know, I got out in the world and I. Bless it, Lord. <laughs> Come on, Scott. Come on, Lord. Lord. I would have rather drink a beer than. Anything, you know, I'd wake up and that's the first thing I'd grab this. <laughs> you know, yesterday we went riding side by sides and all the way up through her, there was a kid, and I don't know if Jen or the kids paid attention, but every one of them I went by, I ran over it because I was crushing my pride. I had done it. Yeah, I crushed it. Bless you. But that's all that I can think about is I saw them. I thought, why would it? You know, I, I feel that yeah, before absolutely. everything. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on, Scott. Come on, Scott. But I'm just thankful, you know, something as small as that little kid there yesterday. You know, yeah. As I drove up to her, he blessed me each time because he thought <laughs> it was simple. I took that away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank God for being here. Come on, Scott. Yeah. 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 Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. <laughs> Whew, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thankful to be here, most of all. Right. Thankful to be safe. Yeah, I mean, it's great for me here. Unless you call me lucky, buddy. I was lost. <laughs>
part of our uh, Heavenly Father's plan. He had a perfect plan one day that he would send his son. You know, if I had a son, it would be hard for me to send. Oh, yeah. My plans are not perfect. <laughs> he is. He is absolutely perfect. Amen. I thank you for that this morning. I've never had a need, not one need, that me and my family has ever had that he didn't provide. Yes, sir. He's a good, good father. Yes. I'm going to say another one for me. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's been a long time since you get to pray. Father, before you say that, yeah. I sure <laughs> have this church to forgive me. Uh, I'm sitting back there and as he was talking, I don't want to be a simple and blog. If somebody needs me to come and pray, I want to be able to pray for you. Amen. I have family that's out of church. I have a granddaughter that's back there that's going to need the Lord. So yeah. Yeah. Amen.
what the song Bob just sung about. God provided another lawnmower on that old trailer of mine. And yeah. Yeah, boy, it's plump full of weed ears and, and lawnmowers, and we want to tore up out here. You know what? He provided another to finish it. Yeah. But that's how good he is. Yeah. And I want to thank him. Uh, yeah, just like they said, talk about the covenant. I broke it. Uh, but believe it what? I repeat it out here with that old lawnmower that the other morning. Uh, uh, way down here in the hill, uh, uh, what Travis used to preach out the cross at, uh, I got down there and thanked him and repented for what I've done. Uh, you know what? I thank him. He gave me that old lawnmower. Yeah. He said he gave me what I needed. Uh, he said that I had a will. Uh, uh, you got a will this morning. Uh, uh, you got a way here this morning. I uh, uh, lift him up and thank him this morning. Uh, well, I can thank him enough. Amen. That old lawnmower broke down out here twice. And I always said the devil's out there. Uh, I want you to go on out there, devil, because we're going to have church this morning. Amen. Uh, if you come here to visit the devil, uh, go on out there. He's right there beside that old light pole. Uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, step on over a little bit from that light pole and got him in there. Uh, uh, that's how easy it is this morning. Thank him this morning. Boy, I can't thank him enough. Well, you know what? Uh, that lawnmower he gives me, he sets on front of the trailer uh, because that old gallon's still putting along. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amen. But boy, oh boy, when it breaks down, yeah. one God gives me, I just hit the switch. Yeah. Have you turned the key this morning? <laughs> Have you turned the key? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Have you? That old doorknob there on your side, just turn that key. Good old knob. Yeah. You want to hear the beam of God? You gotta open the door this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta open it this morning. Well, I've got something to say. Bless you. Everybody else has you. Because I have to say it. Come on, Barbara. I am so shaken in the spirit, and I've got to say it. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Bless her,
I've been praying for those four. Yeah. They make the best soldiers yeah. that yeah. we yeah. can yeah. have. Yeah. And there's a couple more here this morning that God's going to make again to get some. Yeah. 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 I don't know when it's going to be, but yeah. he, does. Right. he does. That's when we're going to get another blessing. Yeah. We're going to get another blessing. Yeah. We're going to get a rejoice, and angels are going to get a rejoice. Right. Right. Oh. Thankful for that this morning. Amen. This is great. Got me stirred yeah. up. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Lord. You don't get to do something for him for a few days, you miss it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you will, Bob. Yes. You know, the, the last morning when we, uh, before we came back to the house, uh, Brenda was in her packing, getting herself ready at about 4 4 30 in the morning. I was already awake. I knew what I was supposed to do early that morning. I had all my stuff ready, but not before. Blessing. But it don't take a man long to get his stuff ready versus a woman to get her stuff ready. But my wife was back out on the other end. And I knew that I had to go out and throw that balcony. <laughs> Just me and him. Oh, yeah. I looked at out across that ocean, just his beautiful grace. Yeah. 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 The creator, yeah. 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 he heard just my cry. Yeah. Yeah. It's cried out, just me and him. <laughs> why, boy, not a person, not a person I say nowhere on the beach. Right. No. Oh. <laughs> so we get everything ready a few minutes later. And he said, we forgot one thing. He said, we forgot the price. No. <laughs> Just got back from the back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but my wife knew, she knew then that yeah. we wasn't going to get that truck. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We back this way before we break. We was not going to do it. Because no yeah. right. right. on the way down there, we had been on the road about an hour or two. That's what we seen. Yeah. Right in the middle of the road. Yeah, right in the middle of a straight yeah. interstate. There was an accident, but thank the Lord didn't fear no one was hurt. Bless Two bad, messed up vehicles, but yeah. thank the Lord no one was hurt. But, I, you know, my thought was, he might pray for those that were out there on the road. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know that, but I did think it, you know. Yeah. But again, I want to just remind my church, if he... Uh, Gives you your least impression to pray for someone, please do that. Because yeah. 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 it may not mean much to you right there, but it could be protecting yeah. them from something. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Well, good, huh? well, Lord, thank you for what he's letting me feel this morning, Lord. He's made a joint myself. Yeah. Things will make it better when we've been praying for it. See them come down that aisle. Yeah, no, that's uh. <laughs> <laughs> I from the holy moment German starts speaking this morning about being in the in faith and out of faith. And the Lord just showed me that I'm treating the same song about how I see you when you're up on the mountain. I'd like to think that my walk would reflect where I'm at with the Lord. The Bible takes it to be ready to give an account for the whole sure of this yeah, It really does. I pray that my walk would do that. And then I was standing here. It just came to me that Peter thought he was being saved. Yeah. So he told Peter, he said, before the talk comes, he'll go out. So when we're really put down to it, where's our walk at? We want to be instant. He said, what are you talking about being instant? That moment, whenever yeah. you're called upon to do something, he said, Sean, sing for me. Sean, preach for me. Yeah. Are you going to be ready or where you need to be whenever yeah. he calls on you? In season, when the spirit's high, it is easy to do that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But whenever we're all standing there looking at each other and you hear the preacher church yeah. outside, yeah. can you open your mouth for him? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to think I could. Yeah. Yeah. 
About six o'clock, Lord Jerry's is coming. We'll gather out and we'll see what the Lord's got in store for us. Amen. John Q. Here comes. Father, once again, we'll come. Bow the water. 